Hello, welcome everyone. This is Hutton's Property Watch. I'm Rex. And today with me, we have Lisa Tech. Today we are, uh, it's something that is fun. Uh, as you can see, we are right now at the last kampong in Singapore at Wongkok. Today we're going to talk about topics that were related to our kampong, mm -hmm. which is old condos. Is it worth buying or investing in one? I have done a bit of research on mm. onto the old condos that is yep. above forty years old. Okay. So that TOP that is uh, one nine eight zero or earlier. Mm. And we have a lease that I compound with freehold and ninety nines. Yeah. Today I'm going to ask you a bit of your opinion whether are they worth buying or not. Sure. Okay. So uh, in the lease that you can see, uh, we have four projects that mm -hmm. whereby are freehold. They are mainly Pandan Valley, yep. Walton Hill, Gilstead Court, yep. and Mimosa Park. Okay. And on the ninety nine years, uh, we have a whole list that I'm going to read it out. Uh, mm -hmm. You all can see on the screen. And all these, all these projects, most of them, I would say, uh, a lot of them are actually undergo the on block mm -hmm. cycle right now. So our last on block fever, when was that? That actually took place uh, in 2016. That was the start. And then uh, it sort of ended in 2018 because the government came out with cooling measures okay. that took effect on the 6th of July. Actually, those condos that you mentioned uh, belongs to the very, very first few uh, pioneer. pioneers. I mean, we can call them pioneer. Uh, pioneer generation <laughs> of condo <laughs> that you you, uh, you find in Singapore itself. Because that's where we actually uh, start uh, having uh, this uh, so-called strata title type of developments in Singapore also. Okay, so um, on this list, we have mm. a freehold and 99. In your personal opinion, mm. in your personal opinion, uh, I have actually plotted out the chart for the past uh, few years. Which one actually will perform better in terms of the uh, price trend? Prices of, uh, say, properties in Singapore, generally, it will follow, say, market conditions. Definitely. If market conditions are positive, definitely tie down back to the economy then prices tends to follow up. Uh, tends to follow. <laughs> it's not 100% all the time, okay? Uh, then of course, the other determining factor is what the government has in uh, their mind or what they are going to plan for the whole area. Okay. If the whole area is going to undergo uh, major transformation. But in, the, generally, uh, in general, do you think that the, the especially we know that 99 years, since mm. it has passed more than 40 over years, mm. do you think that it can withstand the trend <laughs> to continue to go upwards because in general, I think over the last four years, uh, price has been trending upwards mm. for uh, general property yeah, real yeah. estate pricing. But uh, what do you think about the 99 years? Before I show you the chart. <laughs> Before you show me the chart, I think uh, based on what I've seen all this data over the years, older projects, after some time, the value tends to come down, especially for this whole. Uh, properties okay uh, that has really got to do with the tenure of the land okay yeah. so now we have uh, actually using 99.co to plot the chart and uh, on the screen you get to see that the price trend for the 99 years have actually on a declining of negative two percent and on the freehold side we see on the same period we have an increment of 19 percent why is that so is it in your own opinion okay we must uh, know that when we say it's the 99 year list that is a finite uh, number of years that you can actually stay in the property. That is 99 years. Okay. So at the end of 99 years, what will happen to your property? Rex, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> HDB, there's a possibility of getting searched, but uh -huh. for condos, uh, will the government renew the lease? Will the government actually uh, do something to help those 99 years condo? Or, or will de won't developer confirm or come in to do on blocks and, and stuff like that? Isn't that the like definitely will happen? There is a possibility that uh, your older condo might go the on block road, but it's only a possibility. There's no 100% that it will be successful because we have so many instances over the past 20 30 years of uh, condos that tried to go on block and they failed, could not find a buyer, and, and so on and so forth. And you could even have uh, some of the uh, properties sitting on state land, like 60 year lease in the Geylang area. 
at the end of the 60. I read about the news on, on the Channel government. News Asia as mm. well. So uh, understand from Channel News Asia, actually uh, there are uh, there are a few rows of landed terrace houses mm. that is on a 60 years lease. Yep. They have all went back to the government state yes. land. Yes. And they did not went through the SERS, government did not renew the lease. Yep. And in fact, I've went down to, to understand and I've took some photos. As you can see from the photos itself, um, the, the land that they have all been hoarded up mm. and, and it's all go back to state land. Yeah. So, and this is really happening in Singapore because they are, they are, they are people, especially uh, some of my uh, elderly uh, relatives, they actually told me, say that government, government will actually renew the lease or have plans for them even after the lease uh, uh, finish. I think right now the government has, uh, we have never hear them committing to say that uh, once your lease runs out, uh, we will extend another fresh new lease for you. That they have never made that kind of commitment. So we should not expect that uh, to happen. Oh. Uh, because if that happens, it's going to set a precedent. And then after that, everybody sort of expect the same thing to happen also. So and they, also they definitely, the other... will, it, that, means, that means confirm mm. will, uh, they are high possibility that after the lease run out, you, you might not have a place to stay. So what is the main uh, driving factors that you find that uh, the leasehold mm. properties uh, is on a downward trend? Uh, this comes back to how the government values uh, land in Singapore because we rely on uh, something called Bala Stable. Bala Stable, what it shows is that there is uh, a decreasing in terms of the value of the land as the land actually uh, so called the lease runs down. So when it reaches zero, as you see on the, the chart itself, actually uh, the value of land is zero. Okay. So that actually in a way affects the value of your property. So now in your personal opinion, see, since that you say that uh, the freehold older condos are worthwhile investing because the price is on the upward trend, yep. but what mm. about the rental yield per se? Okay, Rex, let me put this question to you also. If you are a tenant and you want to rent, okay. does a freehold condo or a leasehold condo matter to you? If both have the same uh, facilities. They are side by side, same side facilities, by side, same, side location. Facilities, same location. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> why would so, it matter on the tenant yeah. if I'm a tenant? So you see, if it doesn't matter to you and we know that we pay more for a freehold condo and then if you don't mind staying in a leasehold condo. That means you're not going to pay more rental to stay in a freehold condo. Is that right? Um, yes, of course. Yeah. Um, a tenure doesn't matter as, as a tenant. Correct. So Rex, if the tenure doesn't matter to you, what matters to you as a tenant? If I'm the tenant, I have a family and I think what matters to me most would still be the facilities mm. because I have a family and my kids would love to have facilities for them. Mm. Definitely a better facility would much matters to me most rather than the tenure itself. Yep. So that is, that is really on the minds uh, of tenants itself. So a uh, lot of them, when we actually uh, help them to, to source of place to stay, uh, they actually look for uh, newer condos, especially uh, facilities that are newer. But if both are older condos, does it matter? So if both are older condo, which yield would be better? Uh, de definitely the leasehold. Why? <laughs> I think to answer your question, let's take a look at the chart. Sure. It will make it easier for you to understand. Okay. So you see from the chart here, uh, we have two uh, categories. One is freehold condo, one is uh, 99 year. Generally freehold, you have to pay uh, a premium. It's more costly than a leasehold condo. You're talking about the purchasing price. The purchasing price, yes. Of course, uh, yes. So in Singapore, generally you pay 15% or even more than 20% for a freehold compared to a leasehold. Uh, in the same location, yes. It's in the same location, yes. But if your renter stays the same, so when you calculate renter you, you definitely know that you are going to get better renter you for a leasehold condo because your purchase price is lower. And we have an illustration on the rental yield calculation. Mm. Um, so rental yield calculation would be um, the monthly rental multiplied by 12 divided yep. by the purchasing price. Correct. And if the purchasing price is on the 
a higher price tag like a freehold condo mm. definitely it will lower down the rental yield correct and for the purchasing price which is a leasehold that whereby it's lower price tag it will be a higher rental yield yes and what we can see from the chart right now is that on the left hand side we can see that there's Pandan Valley, Wharton, Gilstead and Mimosa they are having a rental yield averagely at 1.8% mm. even though some locations are uh, decently good especially like uh, Gilstead got caught that whereby it's near to the Novena area but uh, their rental is only yield is only at 1.45%. Mm. One of the main reason is definitely higher purchasing price. Yeah. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see that on uh, the, the four projects over mm. here, averagely 2.8%. We piece mentioned having 3.16%. So uh, one of the main reason would be purchasing price yes. is lower, especially their balance lease is only less than 50 over years only. Yeah. Like Peace Mansion is TOP in 1976, uh, balance years is like less than 55 years there about. Mm. So I think this, this kind of give us a better understanding why a uh, leasehold uh, have a better yield than the freehold, even both are old, older condos. Correct. And with these two things, uh, what are the other factors that whereby uh, will affect um, a purchasing of old condos? I think when you buy old condo, just like when you buy a uh, new car versus old car, okay. you cannot expect that the old condo to be in the top condition. Sure. Uh, so when you go in, uh, there are a lot of things uh, in terms of renovation. First, we talk about your unit. We don't talk about the general uh, project itself. So in your unit, you will have to change things like, uh, say, water pipe. Yes. Toilets you want to change. Waterproofing in the toilet. Yep. Then you also have your electrical wiring that you don't change also because for safety reasons. So all this uh, comes out to a hefty sum of money. Definitely. So this is one thing you want to consider. Major renovation costs. Huh? Yes. Then we talk about the general uh, project, the development itself outside, how well it is upkeep and also look at the maintenance, uh, so-called the sinking fund that this project has. Because okay. as, a, as a buyer, mm -hmm. uh, you should ask for this info. I'll tell you why this is important. Share with me. Uh, because as condo agents, there may be things that needs to be replaced. Let's say I say uh, after some time, say the lift keep failing and you need to replace the lift. A lift runs in the uh, value of millions of dollars. And whether does a sinking fund able to support that replacement yes. or, or refurbish of the lift, etc. Correct. I give you a worse example is that you do not have enough. And then what happens is that the uh, MCSD, when they have the annual general meeting every year, they will ask all the subsidiary proprietor to cough up a sum of money. So, so that means as a resident who's staying in an old condo, I might still a uh, hidden cost that will incur mm. to me after I stay in when yes. there's major renovation to be done on the cons uh, condo f facilities. Yes. Wow, okay. Uh, that's something that I don't know, something new. Then um, we always talk about on blocks uh, mm. for older properties. There's actually two uh, hidden risks that we are looking at. One of the hidden risks is definitely if I'm buying for own stay, I throw in let's say hundreds of thousands for renovations mm -hmm. and in the end get on block, I'm going to <laughs> cry at a corner because <laughs> I think for the renovation costs that have been put in and I have need to pay for the hidden seller stamp duty which is could be 12% on first year, 8 and 4% on subsequent yeah. year. So that will be maybe pinning my profit margin for the on block or maybe end up with not much of returns. I give you an example. Yes. I help my uh, client to find a place to stay. So we went around to look at uh, old projects. Of course, not with the intention of uh, on block, of but we know that this project has tried before. Okay. And then we found a place very nice. So he actually bought the bought whole place. place. Yes. But after he bought, one year later, the on block community was formed. <laughs> and then uh, within two years, it successfully sold. Okay. Uh, and he. Although everybody around him uh, happy. will have happy, uh, can get uh, say the premium of say uh, forty percent, but because of the tax that he has to pay to the government, because he's, he oh. is not a Singaporean, so first, when he buy as a PR, ABSD. He, has, he has to pay ABSD. Is it then the first he, property or second property? First property. So he has to so say uh, pay for the ABSD. Stamp duty. Then after that, he had to pay the seller stamp duty. Seller stamp duty. So and now. Uh, the rest of neighbor maybe get 40% uh, more mm -hmm. yep. if they were to sell on block. Whereas for him, after paying all these things, actually his profit uh, half to 20% thereabout. Still a happy owner, I suppose. Uh, it's still a happy <laughs> owner, but of course, uh, 
you will not be happy that uh, you, that you have to pay all these taxes to the government just just because suddenly uh, the rest of your neighbor decide that uh, I want to go on block. My understanding, uh, for older condos, especially for 99 years, there's an issue in getting loan. Is that true? Actually, it's not about uh, whether you have issue getting loan. Of course, the banks uh, they will want to uh, protect their interest. So let's say your your condo lease is there for uh, 30 years, and okay. you are a, a young buyer, you want to buy. Yes, they are not going to lend you uh, the whole full tenure of 30 years. Why not? Because Since I'm young and I can service the loan. Why not? Uh, that there may be a chance that uh, you default and they need to sell. So they need to make sure that uh, there is still some balance list left there about to actually uh, cover cover them also. Oh, so that. bank actually wanted a balance list of the yes, condo yes. in order to so-called be on the safety side. Yes, yes. So what, 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 uh, do, you, do you understand what is the safety portion, the safety uh, loan tenure? It, it depends on the uh, borrower profile and also the, the risk uh, uh, so-called management side that the banks uh, has. Regarding the loan, mm. we will do another episode to talk about it. Alright, stay tuned. So uh, that's for the loan portion. Mm. And in my understanding, CPF also have an issue if you are use, uh, using it to purchase a old condo. There's a, there's a limitation on CPF usage. Yes. So what they uh, try to ensure in a way is that when you buy old uh, properties, whether it's HDB or is it private, it must cover the youngest uh, buyer up to the age of 95. Oh. So you have a, uh, some assurance that you can still have a roof over your head. So based on the aspect, they also try to limit the amount of uh, CPF funds that you can actually use to, uh, for the down payment for that property also. Seems like old condo is only for old people. <laughs> It'd be uh, based on the uh, easier to buy for older people to it, buy. It is easier, uh, let's say, uh, this so-called loan limit that comes into play. But of course, on the flip side, if you buy a freehold uh, old condo, there's no such uh, ah. constraint also. So that's another plus point for freehold older yes. condos. Yes. There's a definitely an expiry date. There's yes, definitely yes. a limited time period that whereby you can recoup your investment, mm. your initial down payment and stuff like that. But for whereas a freehold, the timeline you can pass it or the recoup of investment, you can pass it down even to your next generation. Mm -hmm. Because since the, the lease does not run out. Yep. Okay, to give us a summary on today's episode on to old condos, whether, whether, whether is it worth buying or not. I think one of the main key considerations that we have discussed today would be 99 years versus freehold. I think for older condos, yeah. freehold is definitely uh, a good choice. The only thing that whereby 99 years uh, win for the investment would be the rental yield. Yeah. Rental yield has been higher for the 99 years mm. compared to the freehold. Then in terms of livable condition, both required intensive amount of renovations and, and upkeeping yeah. and of course need to take note of the sinking fund yes. for the purchase. And lastly, definitely would be the loan usage and yes. CPF usage. Uh, need to be mindful, especially you are younger buyers. Have you met the 95 years yes. uh, bracket? Thank you for watching mm -hmm. uh, and that comes to the end of our episode. If you like our this episode, remember to comment below and share with us your thoughts. Look out for any Hutton's associate and we will be giving you more insights about Hutton's uh, uh, upcoming projects and of course, property purchase and selling. Alright, remember to click like, share and subscribe to our channel for more updates on Hutton's Property Watch. See you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.